Good evening. I am recording Wednesday night ghost stories. It's been a while since I've been on. I apologize. I've been working really hard at work and um, I'm going to try to do better to get these podcasts out for Wednesday. Um, I want to prefix, prefix this um, podcast because there is some violence in it. And if you were subject to any kind of concerns for violence, um, you don't want to listen to the podcast. It's not super violent where someone gets murdered, but um, there is some violence in it, and sometimes that does upset some people. So if you find violence upsetting, please don't listen to this podcast. Okay, so um, in 1984, I was seven years old, and as you know, if you listen to the prior podcast, I am Anna, um, and those stories, and those stories are real mostly. Um, so it, I was seven years old. We lived in Costa Mesa, California, in that haunted house. Um, I lived mostly um, with my mom and my grandmother, and then sometimes my aunt and uh, one of my uncles would move in with us for a while. Um, we were quite poor, and um, I had never lived anywhere else in my seven years, and I had, had not ever had my own bedroom or um, even had my own bed for some of the time because we had to share a bed, and um, so I just want to preface that for the story. So my mom had met a man, and as women do, she fell in love, and um, this man had two children, and um, so they would come and visit, and and we would have a good time. And then one day, my mom came to me and said that we were moving today. I don't remember if there was a conversation prior to this where it said, where she told me, hey, you know, this man that I have been seeing, we're going to move in with him. Um, I don't remember that conversation. Um, only my mom will know if that happened, but in my memory, there's nothing. So it was just all of a sudden out of the blue. Um, I'm moving to this new place um, with this man that I hardly know uh, because my mom was dating him and she she brought him around, but I, he wasn't around all the time. So, um, and I would be leaving my grandma behind which my grandma watched me um, when my mom was at work. My mom worked a lot. So I was with my grandma more than I was with my mom, sadly. And um, my grandma was more of my, uh, a mother figure to me at that time because my mom had to work um, so many hours to support us. So I was very upset. I was very upset that I had to move. I was very upset that you know, I didn't know this man, and I frankly didn't like him. You know, I'm seven. You don't like men. You don't know men. <laughs> and the only men that I do didn't know were my uncles. And, of course, you love your uncles, but they're not strange men to you. So, anyways, I was told the day of moving, a big moving truck comes up, and I ran away. I took my mom's 1970 suitcase out of wherever I found it. I think it was in the garage. And it was one of those old, really hard suitcases that had like orange and green flowers from the 70s and like a bake like like my glasses. I don't know. They're like bake like handle. And I took all my stuff that I could fit in the suitcase and I ran around the corner. And what was really strange is that I saw this man and that I'd never seen before um, around the corner. And he, like, tried to grab me. So that scared me. And I ran right back. And so it ended up that I did have a huge fit, but we moved. And um, people were helping us move. And I remember that night. I remember I was seven years old. Um, I slept on a twin bed in the middle of the kitchen. Because that's just where I ended up. You know, people were talking. I, I'm sure um, they were still unpacking. Um, so my first night in that new house was 
asleep on in the kitchen on a mattress on the floor. And um, that house was a small house. It was like 1,100 square feet. We moved to a city called El Toro in California. And we had, the house was, oh, this is hilarious. It was like a poo green. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> it was a poo green. And it was a corner house and it had a really large yard, which is a plus. But it's, this is their me memories afterwards. This is not what I thought at seven. Seven, I was just pissed that I had to leave my home um, into this new place. So anyways, <laughs> fell asleep on, you know, in the kitchen, like I said, woke up and we started putting things in this room and <clears throat> my mom told me, oh, this is going to be your room. And it didn't occur to me that she wasn't going to be in that room with me at the time when we started <laughs> putting the room together. So, um, anyway, it, the day goes by and it's night and um, I have to go to bed. So getting ready for bed. And my mom tells me a story as she did. And um, then she goes to leave. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> where are you going? And I don't know. Most of you have kids. I mean, I don't know if most of you have kids or if you don't have any kids. But at seven, <clears throat> I had a temper tantrum, man. I had the biggest tantrum that my mom was not going to sleep with me. <laughs> And that I was going to be alone in this new house, um, in this strange place with this strange man um, in, in the other room. And so my mom, like, basically left me screaming and told me to go to sleep. Well, the the one of the other things is, is that if you've listened to my other podcasts, I did not sleep without a light on. I had a nightlight in my room. Um, the hallway light was on when I lived with, you know, my grandma and my mom in Costa Mesa and the ba the bathroom light had to be on um, because I was uh, terrified in that house. <sighs> and so um, anyway, this man, his name was Daryl. He did not uh, allow my mom to leave the lights on because that cost money. And, um, I was in that room terrified until finally I was like, I can't do this. And I got up and I walked into the room that they, my mom's room with Daryl and I started crying and I was like, I can't, can you, can I just sleep on the floor? I brought my blanket. I won't make any noise. I just can't sleep alone. I've never, you gotta remember, I never slept alone in my life. It's been my whole entire life. And um, she kept telling me no. And, you know, the screaming got louder by me, of course. I'm seven. And he, uh, this strange man that, you know, I knew in passing, got up, started screaming at me, grabbed my arm, started dragging me to my room. And I wrenched myself away from him and started running. He ran after me, screaming, get the F back in your room. You are not sleeping here. Um you effing, you know, this, and he was screaming pretty bad, and um, he chased me to what is my room, and threw me on the bed, took my pants down, and hit me, and I'm crying, and he's telling me, you stay here, um, you're not sleeping, and, and, you know, with your mother, we're sleeping by ourselves, you don't get up from this room, and, um, and then he left and slammed the door, uh, which all of this is new to me. I was never hit before. I, uh, you know, never really screamed at. And um, like when uh, for discipline, it was like my grandma threatening uh, me to hit her. My grandma was uh, handicapped and she would threaten us because my cousins would come over as well and um she would watch us all and we would get threatened in, by the cane. So she would have this cane and she said that she was going to hit us with this cane if we didn't behave. Uh, but we never got hit by a cane, if that makes any sense. Like it was just threats. So I've never gotten screamed at like that. I've never got spoken to like that. Never gotten hit ever. So you can imagine how tragic that was for a seven-year-old child to, to one get chased, get sweared at, and get hit. So I 
completely had a breakdown. Like I was, I cried myself to sleep. It was a really horrible night. My mom never came back in the room. I'm sure she didn't know what to do because I'm sure she never experienced that either. And um, so um, middle of the night, I wake up out of nowhere. I wake up out of my deep sleep that I cried myself into, you know, oblivion to. And I look up and, and there's a man, uh, a man that I didn't know, standing at the foot of the bed. And I'm looking and he starts talking to me and he says, <clears throat> well, first of all, let me explain what he looked like. So he, he had all white on. He had a white button down shirt and a white, like almost like khaki pants but they were white and then he had a black belt and um he had like a receding hairline like uh almost like Eddie Munster if anybody's my age you know what I'm talking about and uh <laughs> and um he said to me he said everything is going to be okay i am going to be with you and i am going to protect you and you don't have to worry anymore because that's not going to happen again and i didn't know who this man was, but I felt comforted and I believed what he was going to, he said to me and I went back to sleep uh, and, um, I wasn't scared, which is weird. And I wasn't, I didn't think to myself at that time, who was that man or anything like that? I was seven. So, um, anyways, so that night this man came to me and so the next morning, I didn't say anything to my mom or anything, and we were putting things away in the room for a while, and then I was playing with my Barbies, and I had, um, I think a lot of people had this in the 80s, but it was a music box with a little ba da dancing ballerina on a spring. So the spring um, was like this, and the, da the she would twirl on the spring, and um she never stayed on the spring. My mom kept having to glue it. Anyways, I was playing with my Barbies. I opened up the, the jewelry box and inside the jewelry box was a photo and it was a black and white photo. And there was this man, the man who I saw the night before in my room talking to me. And I didn't know who this man was. I had never seen him before last night, but now I had a photo in my jewelry box of this man and I, I went over and I grabbed the photo and I brought it to my mom and I was like, mom, who is this man? And she explained to me that that man was my grandfather and he had died when my mom herself, I think she was three or four, um, when he died. Um, so he, that man that came to me in the middle of the night, I truly believe was a ghost, um, was my grandfather. And he looks over me. And that night, I mean, from that night on, I was never hit again. But there was a lot of other uh, things that happened in, in that household that wasn't, you know, healthy. But uh, because he wasn't, he wasn't really a nice man. <laughs> but in retrospect, um, I'm pretty sure that my grandfather came to me and, and comforted me in the time, in my time of need. You know, I haven't seen him again, uh, but there's times where I felt a presence of, of support of when I needed it. And I truly believed it was him and I spoke to him. Um, but, you know, <clears throat> I, I think there's ghosts out there and, and, you know, um, I digress. Anyway, I'm just going off in a completely different directions, but what I wanted to say is, um, that, you know, things happen in, in your life and you need to look at the signs and follow them if you believe that, you know, someone is helping you. Make sure you like and subscribe to our podcast. The support really helps us. Um, and it's free. You don't have to pay anything for it. And then um, also our YouTube channel. All right, that's the end of our podcast. Please um, 
Thank you for all your support. We really appreciate it. Um, if you watch us on YouTube, please like and subscribe and share. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It really helps us. Um, and again, we appreciate your support and um, we'll talk to you soon. Have a good night.